they come up. This meeting is being recorded. Okay, just okay. I'd like to welcome everyone to week two of our Build a Career in, in Education series. And uh, this week we're going to be looking at building a track record in education. And I'm very pleased to, to welcome uh, my, my colleagues that, are, that have just joined us, but especially our guests, Suki Hammond, trainer, facilitator here in Luton, and David Graham, head teacher at the magnificent Puttridge High School also in, a, in our local town of Luton here from where I am at the moment. And I chose the best photographs I could of both of you, so, uh, so, so not to have any, any complaints as well. So, uh, so thank you both of you for, uh, for having, uh, coming along today uh, to, to guest on, on, on our 60 Minutes together. So just to give a little retrospect um, and uh, pre review preview, last week we took an overview, building a career in education, of, of, the, of the six weeks. This week is our achievement track record success. And next week, the uh, should I stay or should I go? Six key questions to ask yourself before reaching for the time's head. <clears throat> and then we're, then we're looking at what, is, what would be suitable roles. If we decided that we're going, okay, what, which role is appropriate given our, given our position there? And then for the last two weeks, we're gonna be looking at uh, tackling the real nuts and bolts of application, tackling the application form and, and preparing for, for interview. So uh, looking forward to that. Okay, getting on with our, just restating the, uh, kind of, I hesitate to say, but the model, uh, which is open to modification, uh, looking at the career development. And we, we said easy as one, two, three, A, B, C, where A was, Bottom line is that we need to establish and, uh, and, and thrive, not just survive in our current role, okay, but build a solid record of achievement. And that's what we're looking at today. If we're going to be firing up the application form and, uh, and looking at the per printing off the person spec, we better hope that we've got plenty of stuff to, to, write, uh, to write about. And so that's always going to be at the core of what we do. But uh, if we've built the capacity to achieve there, maybe we can establish what I call uh, educational side hustles. So extending our repertoire, building networks, could be also not too much at a tangent, enriching a day job and providing that little bit of additional income as well as some additional career progression routes. And um, part three, uh, element three is about our passions, hobbies and wider talent. So, hey, look, do you remember that when we had work-life balance? Well, you know, this is really what it's aimed for, providing balance, rest, and fulfillment during, uh, during our time when we're employed at school, and also providing in the future alternative career routes and income, okay, should we wish that there. So could we ask my two guests just to kind of reflect on that there and particularly looking at your, your career record. And uh, David, we've... Uh, uh, I, I, we first met, didn't we, at uh, Queensbury Upper School in Bedfordshire when uh, I was head of science and you were fresh-faced NQT uh, in, a, in the PE department there. So um, it's interesting about, about PE. We we'll just look at your the, 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 uh, how you developed in that. Do you want to just talk us through that, that kind of career path that you're on? And I'll just ask five, one or two questions uh, of particular interest. Yeah, thank you, Paul, and uh, good evening, and uh, welcome to everybody else. And uh, apologies for being uh, unshaven here. Um, <laughs> I think it's my first professional engagement when I haven't shaved. Oh, yeah. um, but it's it's lovely to be invited. Um, and yes, 1992, I met you, Paul. Um, I spent my free periods um, reading um, the likes of uh, Graham Greene while sat around the swimming pool, and that was the that was absolutely acceptable um, back in the day. But, uh, <laughs> things have changed. Um, but uh, really the same principles in terms of career development is uh, are very much pertinent uh, now as they were then. Um, and I think that for me as a PE teacher, I've had to um, break through a lot of boundaries, and a lot of preconceptions about PE teachers. Um, some are actually absolutely founded to be fair. Um, and, and others, it's really important to make sure that people um, take you seriously, 
um, and there are various tactics and strategies that I've employed uh, throughout my career. Um, and as, as we know, there are many PE teachers that have gone through to, to, to senior leadership and headship and CEOs. Um, and so I think it's, a, it's very valid to make sure that you, you capitalize on your strengths. Um, but for me, I found that um, extracurricular was something I really enjoyed and really loved, but it actually got in the way towards the end of my time as a PE teacher um, to break through to be a middle leader. And I had to make some sacrifices from the extracurricular um, to make sure that I um, got through and um, got the necessary training and experience, um, a more whole school and more departmental level. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed my time at Queensbury. I then went on to Breakspear to be head of PE um, and then on to, to be assistant head teacher in charge of sixth form. And um, I would, for instance, what some of the PE boundaries, I would never meet anybody um, in shorts and, and um, polo shirt. I would always put a suit on. Um, I, would, I could get changed in a flash, Mr. Ben style, if you like, um, <laughs> but I would get changed very quickly and no parent um, or senior leader would ever meet me um, in, in, in shorts and um, in, in a polo shirt. It was always being a suit um, to try and break down those barriers. And I found that I was judged far, fair, far more fairly um, if I was in a shirt and tie. Um, I went to being head of sixth form at Nicholas Breakspear School in St Albans. And I think that was the making of me. Um, I know we've talked about this, uh, but I found that um, I was, I'd, I'd run a successful department and, uh, and, that, and that was great. Um, but to have almost a mini school um, upstairs away from everybody else, where I had, I was in charge of um, the, the students and I had, you know, two, 300 students um, and, uh, and I had sort of autonomy almost. And that, that was a, a great um, sort of uh, basis um, to become a, a future head teacher um, later on. So th that was a really important time for me. And I, I learned an awful lot. Um, I won over the students. Um, we had things like dress code changes and um, common room changes to make them um, working areas. Um, but it was a, a really great time for me. Um, I then went on to work with a guy called Marcus Losky um, in Bryson Square. So this is a bit left field. I'm not a risk taker. I know you, Paul, have done lots of different things outside of the mainstream school, but this was my one little venture. Um, and I was just absolutely blown away by this guy. I heard him speak. I asked him if I could work for him. He said yes. And a few months later, I was working as a senior consultant. Um, I think what I found out there is what I didn't want to do. Um, I didn't want to be out of schools. Um, I didn't want to work with 10 people. I wanted to work with a, a large um, group of people and I wanted to work in partnerships. I didn't want to work in a silo. Um, so it was a very useful experience, but actually it was something that I didn't want to continue with. And so I then went on to be deputy head at two different schools, um, which is another interesting move. Um, and I really felt that I wanted to work with a different type of head teacher um, than the one I worked at at Francis Bacon School in St Albans. Um, and that was a driving force. And I perhaps lacked a bit of confidence um, because it was a very difficult experience at Francis Bacon. Um, and then went on to Highfield, had a, a fantastic experience at Highfield, and, and then um, more, more latterly at, um, at Puttridge, where I joined in 2015. Um, and uh, it's been a really tough first few years and 215 to 218, um, I would say. And then it's been absolutely fantastic. And I think I work with um, some of the most exciting people, both within my school or within the trust. I think we, you know, I work in probably the, the best trust in, in, in the country now. Um, and it's a, it's a hugely exciting job that I have now. So that's a, a quick walkthrough. You said I had 10 minutes. I reckon I've been a little bit less. No, no, um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to uh, just think, ask you a few things you mentioned about some of the uh, potential negatives of, of being pigeonholed as a with with, uh, with, with PE but uh, there are strengths aren't there I mean my experience in terms of uh, PE teachers having uh, you know generally being well organized have a good relationship with uh, students and uh, you know having a, almost like a natural presence it, it, depending on which way we seem to, to want to manifest that uh, those are strengths to build on aren't they yeah, without a doubt. I think um, I spoke to a, another head teacher who was a PE teacher actually recently, 
um, and it was about organizing testing for COVID. And, uh, and she said to me, it's just like um, organizing a sports day, really, isn't it? Um, and, uh, and I think our organizational skills um, are often second to none. It's not that it's not required in other departments, but I think it's regularly required um, within, within PE. Um, and, uh, and I think it, it lends itself to, to, to those transferable skills. Um, uh, but I think, to be honest with you, Paul, and I'm going to talk a little bit later about, um, about drive, but the enthusiasm you often get with a PE teacher um, yep. can, can be almost a little bit overwhelming. Um, but you need that kind of enthusiasm to be, to be a great leader. Yes. And, and if that goes, then you're in trouble, aren't you? Yeah. Can I, yes, indeed. And, uh, you know, to, to, to motivate and inspire and to, and to take a lead, definitely. Um, what about this, uh, this idea of the, the head of sixth form being a really good position, you know, to uh, as like, like being an all rounder, curriculum pastoral, raising attainment, everything else. It's a, do you agree? It's a, it's, it's a good position to aim for, I think. Yeah. I mean, the, the amount of people that um, you have responsibility for, um, and you also get a real sense of numbers, um, capacity uh, and finance, because, because you're very clearly told by the head teacher that every child matters in terms of finance, not only in terms of their grades, um, and you're solely responsible for the grades in which they produce. Um, and that's a huge marketing tool. So all of those things make it absolutely um, imperative that you run a, a high quality sixth form. You get challenged by um, all sorts of parents and the very academic that are asking you why you're not running French because there's only two children um, can, can you not do further maths and and all sorts of um, challenges on the academic route um, real tough decisions about students that don't get into sixth form because they don't get the point score mm. um, together with ridiculous behavior issues that you get which you really shouldn't do but no. of course you've only got year 11s just straight out of uniform so it's no great surprise um, but it, it's, it's, it, it really builds, um, builds your career nicely, I think. Thank you. And I think we were saying earlier that uh, that, that, that change from middle leadership to assistant head is, uh, is, uh, is quite a jump, isn't it? What advice would you give to a middle leader that uh, wants to make that move to SLT? Yeah, for, for me, this is the, the biggest barrier for, for a lot of heads of department. I think it's a real challenge to go from middle leadership to senior leadership and I think they uh, there's too often do I see that middle leaders don't they're, they're brilliant at what they do but what they haven't done is they haven't put the building blocks so they, they've really got to work and um, engineer it backwards if you like and think about what am I going to talk about at an interview that's going to be different from the next person and if you can talk about whole school experience I think you, you've got a, a huge leg up um, and and that's the that's the advice that I would um would give and it's not that difficult and I think that's the problem people think it's difficult and it isn't because what you'll be doing is you'll be offering to do something I would recommend you offer to do something for nothing um, you join a teaching and learning team you ask to run self-evaluation um, you, you run um, you, you ask to say drive the, the the curriculum sequencing whatever it might be um, but you get absolutely stuck in something whole school and that will give you something that you can talk about at interview. And I'd almost avoid the money at that stage, because if you're going for senior leadership, you must be on top of your job. So you've got your department singing and sorted. Um, you've got a great team around you. So you should have that space and time to do something for nothing. But it, it isn't. You might not get the monetary value now. Um, but what you will do is, is put those building blocks in and you'll get people very excited at the, across the other side of the table. That's great. Thank you, Dave. Erin, uh, you raised a hand. What would you like to what would you like to say? Then uh, Seiko, I'm going to bring you in. Yeah. Um, evening, David. Uh, I find that really evening, important. Aaron. As a PE teacher, I can relate to lots of what you're saying. Um, my question was really about the transition from assistant headship into deputy headship. Um, how you found that and really what is your kind of uh, essential advice there? Yeah, I mean, I think things have changed a lot. Um, I, I'm going to use a bit of a, a football analogy in, in terms of, from a head teacher's point of view, the formation about how many deputies and how many assistant head teachers. I think things have changed quite a lot now. Um, and I think that 
there are many assistant head teachers that are actually doing the role of a deputy head teacher. Um, so I think it's far more subtle now, um, but perhaps that makes it more of a challenge, Erin, to, to, to make that leap and prepare yourself for that. Um, I suppose one of the things is, um, I would talk about things like appetite, I would talk about drive, um, and, I, and I would and would talk about your passion for what you want to do. Um, and I think it's it's that credibility that you're looking for. Um, and, and that's quite tough because it's, it, it is about you as a, an individual. Um, but if you can differentiate yourself from other assistant head teachers um, with that appetite, that drive, um, and that passion for school leadership, demonstrating you can be utterly trusted by your head teacher, demonstrating that you are there not just for your portfolio, you're there for others um, and helping them with their portfolio, helping out, seeing where the head's struggling um, and, and, and doing that, those community links, um, the meets and greets um, that I know you're so good at actually, Erin, um, and making that the bigger difference on those small things outside your own portfolio and demonstrating to the head teacher that you are absolutely um, invaluable um, at interview level um, with your own head teacher as well. I think they're the sorts of things that I would talk about. Um, it goes without saying that you, your understanding, your knowledge, um, and, and, um, and, and some of the more obvious things, but they're the sort of things that I, I feel make a difference with um, moving to deputy headship. And then lastly, Paul, if I've got a moment, yeah. um, I think you need to, at that point, say that you are your dream job, you're destined to be a fantastic head teacher and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and have your own school. I think Absolutely. that's something I learned from our CEO, Adrian, um, that um, we're looking for future head teachers in our new deputy head teacher, shall we say. Is that, is that fair enough, Erin? Yeah, that's brilliant. That's um, some really good advice. I'll, I'll certainly take it on board. Thank you, Greg. Uh, thank you, David. Thank you, Erin. Uh, Sika, you got any comments on that, uh, what David is saying about making the leap to SLT? Um, yes, I've just put on the chat box. I'm not sure if, if anyone's seen oh, that. Um, yeah. I'm currently a middle leader, head of year, um, hoping to make a move to um, a leadership role. And I've got vast pastoral experience, but very little teaching and learning, which um, which was, became more apparent to me in a recent interview that I attended. Um, and I feel like that's a, quite a big barrier for me at the moment to join um, a leadership team. And I'm actually considering joining a new school um, back to just teaching and then kind of working my way up. I mean, what advice could, could you give um, to someone in my position? And what's your role now? Say that again, sorry. Well, are you assistant head now? No, I'm head of year. Um, I'm head of year 13. Um, I've been head of year at Key Stage 4 and 5 for the past five years. Mm -hmm. shall, shall I answer, Paul? Yeah, yeah, please do that. If you, and then we'll just ask Sophie and uh, welcome Sophie in. I wonder if you'd like to give some advice to a seeker. David, off you go. Okay. Yeah, for me, definitely don't give in your um, head of year role. Um, you're looking for senior leadership, so you fit the bill perfectly um, in terms of um, having capacity. I think um, book, a, book a time with your head um, to, to say what your ambitions are. And, uh, and think about, again, I think Paul's going to touch upon this later looking at the slides, but think about what your next job you would love to be. So if it is teaching and learning, if that's the thing that you, you feel you'll be doing at senior leadership, um, then I would look to join the teaching and learning team um, and, uh, and, and play a, a significant role, get the opportunity to speak in front of um, staff, um, to, to craft um, and co-construct uh, practice with the teaching and learning team. Um, or whichever team you choose, um, I definitely would, would know, I think your behaviour and partial um, experience is invaluable, but I absolutely agree with you. And I, and I think that you need experience of the other areas in a big way. Um, yeah. But I think you can do that um, within your, and, and carry on with your role. And you could also say to your, to your head, because one thing I learned is actually with at my first school at Queen's Group, which you talked about, is that you might be there a little longer than you think. Mm. So make sure that you're not planning to be lead, to, to, to have left. Make sure you carry on building your career at your current school, uh, just in case 
um, yeah. and then you'll have more and more to talk about. So offer your expertise, your enthusiasm, your drive for the teaching and learning um, team. They will love the fact that you're getting involved and you'll mm -hmm. be able to utilize um, your classroom experience in, in a really beautiful way um, in, the, uh, in the, the, the realm of teaching and learning. Great, okay. thank you. Thank, thank you, you, David. And thanks for the question, Hasik. And do uh, all of all of our colleagues do put any questions in the in the chat there. Moving on, Suki, um, please uh, go through. We we made an exhaustive list of your of your roles and experience. So similar to Dave, would you like just to talk us through, and then we'll pick up one or two points there. Sure. No, thank you. And hello, everybody. Um, yeah, um, my uh, career in teaching has been what I would say varied. Um, I've not necessarily taken the traditional route. Uh, forgive me for calling it traditional, David, but in terms of, you know, building on to senior leadership and eventually becoming a head. Um, I trained, I worked in primary schools, I was um, went on quickly to become year group leader and senior leadership within the first three years of teaching and then on to acting deputy head. And it was at that point, and this was in primary schools, even though I've talked uh, primary, secondary and some university teaching that I'll touch upon. It was at this point uh, we decided to have children. And after doing that, uh, I went back to teaching part time and picked up the Senko role, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And I was doing this, I thought, well, um, even though I'm enjoying this, I need to find out something about it. So I took a City and Guilds in it, City and Guilds at the time, um, and moved on to another school. And it was this, it was at this point I discovered that actually promotion-wise, whilst being part-time was really hard. Um, I was considered at the time I'm talking about, and I'm sure. Um, experienced heads like Dave, uh, Dave will think otherwise now, but it was almost like I was considered, well, you know, she's only keeping her hand in because she's a part-time teacher. And so I wasn't offered uh, those sorts of CPD opportunities or training or at that particular time. So I had to think differently. So I decided at the time that actually I was going to, um, I was going to take care of my own progression and do a master's so that took a few years to do that then happened I happened to then be in the right place at the right time because the uh, person who I was doing my master's with uh, was in, also teaching on the ITE side said can you come and do some lecturing for us as well because you would think you'd be good I didn't at this point give up the teaching I kept that going so I kept the part-time business going the A bit from, as we can see on the on the slide, that was my sort of my meat, you know, that was what I did. My high, side hustle, uh, the word that Paul uses on the slide, became my university stuff. Uh, I then moved on uh, to become inclusion manager, which was a bigger role in a, a bigger school. Um, decided that going back to uh, special needs or working in that way wasn't for me. And then went into secondary teaching, my subjects English um and enjoyed doing that but then also had the opportunity of becoming involved with um what is now uh, as david said one of the biggest sort of teaching hubs uh, on the ite side uh and again i kept up my um role in teaching as a class teacher but then did this on the side this then expanded that i was able to get some work uh, with the university of Hertfordshire at the same time and then so we come to last September, September 2021, and I we made the decision for me to step out of class teaching because I wanted to do more of the ITE. So now, as we stand, I'm involved again with the local provider, again with the University of Hertfordshire. Um, I also now do some facilitating for the ECTs and ECMs, and hopefully we'll be taking on some of the facilitating and group work with the NPQs on the leading teacher and leading teacher development side of things. So my route, I would say, hasn't been uh, building my way up into senior leadership and heading a school, but it's been a bit of a roundabout, uh, taking opportunities as and when they came along uh, to build that sort of track record of things I've done. That's great, Sugi. Now, can I just ask you, what, what's striking about what you've uh, uh, mentioned is the way that you've uh, you've uh, 
done uh, academic qualifications uh, alongside your, uh, your your school role there. Now, how have you managed that? Because that is quite a burden uh, to to do that. Did you was it a particular need not only to feel qualified, but for other reasons? Um, I think it was. Uh, I think it was purely because I found being part time, I wasn't being offered the kinds of courses that other people were. It was becoming to be a bit of a. If you're a senior leader or in management, you would then get offered some of the courses. Uh, so I was always lower down the list. You know that sort of she's only part time type of label. Uh, so doing that master's was for me, it was just to say, I've got a brain, I want to use it, and maybe doing a master's will be coming useful sometime. Um, so that was the reason I sort of did that by myself. At the time, we didn't have things like the MPQs that are now, you know, a, a teacher in my position could do. Uh, so it was a way of keeping my brain engaged, uh, even though I wasn't necessarily getting the opportunities where I worked. Does that answer Sure. And, and what about more generally? Thank you for that. And, and what about more generally, as we're talking about career development in, in primary schools that are, are smaller, with less, less opportunities for interim roles? What, what advice would you give to uh, viewers that might be talking uh, in the primary school? Actually, I think what David said was great, you know, um, to, to uh, Hasika, all about taking opportunities and also asking for opportunities. Um, and I think in primary, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, some primaries can be very small and therefore um, opportunities are limited. But what you can do is work out what you do want to do and ask. You know, ask to either work alongside somebody or be given an aspect to do. You know, we have performance management appraisal, whichever phrase people like to use. You know, it can you can say, well, this is where I want to go. This is what I want to do. I would like to be involved in this. Everybody, all schools have got a school improvement plan or, you know, that sort of direction the school is going in. Maybe pick something from there that says, oh, that sounds good um, and get involved in that. Uh, but yes, but I'd also then say about moving, which I know you're going to tackle next week, you know, move to a bigger place where there may be more opportunities. But in smaller places, you're going to have to do the asking and the saying, I would like to. You won't fall in your lap. That's great. Thank you. And the, the, the final point just to raise with you is that in the same way that I think that the sixth form provides a really good range of, uh, you know, range of opportunities, uh, I think it's probably the same with Senko. Would you agree in terms of having a, a pastoral emphasis, but also being very much aware about attainment and uh, an inclusion? Uh, it's quite a good role as an all-rounder, would you agree? I do. I agree with you. It also develops those other skills that, are, that um, you don't necessarily have, not have, but you don't get access to. The things like working with outside agencies, um, you know, liaising with whoever it might be for a particular child or a group of children or a family. It's getting to know, uh, you know, that's how I got to know the local authority at the time, very strong uh, SEN team and support, advisory teams. You get to know people in the local authority or people in, in the, who can give you support. So it's also about developing other skills you know, dealing with parents, you know, every day in a different way, not just, you know, about what the child's need, um, breaking down plans so that, that they understand it, uh, filling in quite complicated forms, especially if you were going forward for some sort of assessment. Um, yeah, as I said, working with outside agencies as well and writing quite complicated sorts of reports as well and you know speaking to people like governors because I was one of the people who had to go and, and speak about SEN at the time as well so you're getting a yeah. wide variety of skills in that role as well and it's specialist knowledge that I came through the physics science route but uh, you know as a senior leader if you've got that specialist knowledge of uh, inclusion and special needs then that that, that then that gives you added insight when you become a, a, a onto the senior leadership isn't it yeah, that's right. It, it does, you know, and it, uh, it links to, as you said, inclusion, you know, culture in the school, uh, attainment, you know, progress for uh, those children who may be struggling. So it does hit quite a few things 
as well. Okay, thank you. So thank you to uh, the two guests for just talking through the uh, model there. I think you've definitely spoken about the way that you, you know, obviously rely on a solid track record of achievement, but uh, I think through your the work you've been doing uh, with, with getting your qualifications and, and working, Dave, outside of uh, in education, but outside of schools, all of the things have, have, have built, your, built your repertoire. OK, um, it, it, as we were saying on, on the B there, I've got to just ask you as we go along in the kind of second half of the session here to to look at uh, your particular assistant heads uh, position here. Could I ask you, we get we get very long person specs, too long often. You know, I just wonder for, for both of you in, in the assistant heads that you've seen for the, for a promoted role, what's maybe the one thing that for every kind of good hire you've made, you know, or, or you've seen as a senior position, what's that kind of thing as they come into the interview room? Are you really looking for uh, in, in, in an applicant? Dave, first of so, all. Sorry, do you want me to go first, Paul? Yeah, if you don't mind. Um. I think that um, I now tend to do a one-to-one -one discussion with the candidates. Okay. Um, I think you can tell an awful lot. Informal, um, in kind of a informal chat without too much structure. Yeah, and, and if I'm honest, um, before that, I'll do a tour with the majority of candidates um, and they'll come and see the school and myself. Um, I will always show everybody around um, for assistance, and deputy head level posts myself okay. um and okay. and very rarely will i do it with anyone else other than myself and the and the candidate um i'm looking for and you know over the years paul and it's now quite a few years so we'll be talking almost 30 years that we've known each other yeah. um you've lent me a whole variety of books to read you send me links um and articles um, and yet I still rely on what's getting a slightly bigger gut at the moment um, as my number one resource to make judgments. And I'm looking for someone who has got real drive and passion, which I know is two words. So I'm yeah, looking for yeah, yeah. absolute drive from the individual um, in all that they do. I, I want to know that they're passionate about their, about their families, about their hobbies, um, as well as about the work that they do. Um, I, I want them to be um, team um, team people um, and have real drive. And yeah, then, but I'm gonna, so, so how does that manifest itself in a, an informal chat and, uh, and, 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 a, and a tour up and down two flights of stairs? Yeah, well, I'm just going to, there's one last little bit that makes it magical. Yeah. And the last little bit is that they're, they're willing to listen, which I'm not so good at, and I always have to get better at, but they're willing to listen and take on advice. Right. Um, and I try to demonstrate that I'm here, every day's a school day, um, and I'm here and I wanna learn off them. And I think if we get those, that combination of things, then we get something very exciting. How do I, I think you can see you know, um, at the moment, I'm infused by this conversation because I'm leaning in. So um, body sort of uh, language, I can tell when I'm walking. Um, the, the way they are listening and engaging in the conversation, I can tell without them speaking. Um, the style of their questions um, and, you know, how they um, liaise and interact with the children and yes. other staff. Um, we walk into a lesson. They engage um, by crouching down, maybe, if we say non-COVID times for a moment, crouching down, um, praising um, the child, looking for the positives, thanking the teacher on the way out. Yes. And being infused when they walk out hmm. um, of the lesson about, oh, I love what I saw there. And, um, you know, rather than saying what we do at our place is this. Yes. And then at an interview, they say, on the tour, I just love what I saw in terms of displays or... You know, right. All the sorts of tactics we talked about, but you can see through tactics at interview. We know that. Yes. Um, yeah. And you can but see that is a gut it's, feeling, it's you know, that, that, that you develop uh, over uh, over the years, I'm sure, when you see whether you, know, you see the, the connection between how someone displays that in the interview and the colleague that they they end up being. Uh, Suki, what about yourself? What do, when, you, when you meet colleagues, what, what gives you that kind of uh, 
uh, the, the feeling that uh, the person you're speaking to is could be someone special. I think all of what David say. We're not. Uh, I think when I've been in a position to to interview, it's been passion, a real, uh, and you. There's no one, two, three about it. You you sense that in the way they speak and all of the things that David has said. And I think probably f- flexibility, that sort of can-do mm-hmm. attitude, um, mm-hmm. you know, that they show in may- maybe when it might be a new aspect that they've got to do, but it's a positive, yeah, sure, that's that really excites me. You know, you, you don't have to be the world's be- expert in everything, but it's the attitude you have towards perhaps taking on a, a slightly new area that you weren't expecting. Uh, that for me, you know, as well as everything that David has said. Okay, thank you. That's great, both of you. Well, what I did in my preparation is that I, uh, I, I did a survey of, uh, of the Times Z to look at the uh, assistant head person spec. And personally, I, I, I think that this will probably, um, this will probably, uh, be largely relevant for deputies as well. And I try to find what are the things that keep on coming up in the in the person uh, specifications, and there and there were eight things that I found <clears throat> that you could uh, that, that you could see as a common thread. The first one was uh, evidence of a and, and these are verbatim quotes from from person specs I saw. The so evidence of attendance at courses providing a balanced and relevant preparation for senior leadership. So. Uh, and it's not only uh, you know, attendance, but as you can see, the sense of a balanced and relevant preparation. You can see that you, you, we could all go out on courses that may be at a tangent, um, you know, to not only our current job, you know, but to, to our future jobs. So I like the idea here that so there's, there's a sense here of that we're strategically looking at projecting forward to our next job, and uh, and and making a. a, a making provision in the courses we attend that is relevant preparation for senior leadership. So we're not just going on anything that someone sent you on the course. We're taking charge of, of what we engage in. <clears throat> and Hasika, I think what you are, you are alluding to with your question about a, 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 a balanced preparation, you're a sense that somehow, I mean, I know I, I, I've seen your CV and everything that is supremely depth in depth, but you feel that you know you want to balance it up with uh, some other uh, kind of uh, activity is going to give you a balanced ticket, and I think that that provides us with the more opportunities for a, a wide range of assistant heads, posts, or and deputies future on. So good and current knowledge of current trends and practices in education. Okay, so we are aware of things in the education world, uh, and uh, uh, not only trends but uh, practices. So we know what goes on in other schools. We're not blinkered or just the even, just confined to our own map. We're, we're quite perhaps widely read and, uh, and know what's going on. Number three, <clears throat> here we're, we're monitoring and reviewing, uh, analyzing and using data to make decisions for the improvement of teaching. This is quite a detailed statement here, but uh, quite a lot of the work that we do uh, on, on senior level is then is involved in uh, SIFT, Sifting information, looking at evidence, drawing conclusions, looking at data, and on the basis of that, making decisions. Why? For the improvement of learning. So uh, that's a, quite a multi-layered uh, point there in number three. So what, what are we doing? What are we doing in our middle leader role? What could we do to project forward and, and look at whole school perspective? <clears throat> number four, track record of improving teaching excellence through robust and adaptable forms and so uh you can see robust there's quite a lot of woolly mentoring goes on and uh and, and uh, you know so it has to be uh you know with a, a methodology behind it and adaptable we now know and uh, we often talk now of mentoring and coaching being on the continuum and scrutiny <coughs> the interesting word scrutiny so that means really looking at evidence and making judgments and doing whatever it takes, whatever style, in order to improve the teaching of those in our team and maybe beyond. Last four here, <clears throat> experience in organizing and running C- CPD programs for teaching staff. We can all imagine that, uh, that we might be doing that within the department meeting, but there are other levels of depth of running that across the whole school and maybe across uh, the mat. Something maybe I'd like to come back to, David, is you drew a distinction between 
um, you know, the years before you joined them at and the years after. So perhaps I could come back to you about that one a bit later on. So organizing sure. and running. Six would be success in whole school plans and initiatives. So we're, we're working and, you know, it, 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 within the team in the primary school, within the year group, or within, say, the humanities faculty. But when we go to senior team, we, we're going to be talking about whole school initiatives. So how can we grab a slice of that whole school pie, uh, even when we're a middle leader, to be able to say, and here's the difference, you see, the difference between saying, oh, what would you do? OK, and uh, you, you're then projecting into what you might do. But uh, the people that have been there and done it a bit ahead of time, ahead of schedule, if you like, say, not would I do, what have I done? And that, that is a, that's a world of difference in the quality of that answer, if you can draw upon that experience. And so number seven, <coughs> a bottom line here, uh, evidence that says to experience of raising standards. Uh, you know, if you can say that you've got three, four year track record of, uh, of improving exam results or out scores or, uh, you know, if we're passionate about attendance and, uh, you know, attendance of parents evenings or attendance at school uh, or your SAT results uh, in primary school. Yeah, there's not much that can trump that because that's what really about, uh, a lot of about what, what we're trying to do in schools. Let's face it. And of course, <coughs> means to an end. It's about building and leading teams uh, in order to sustain that, that, that improvement. Uh, we don't believe in lone ranges in education anymore. So it's about, and it's interesting, we often say building and leading teams, but uh, it's a di different thing, isn't it? About building a story about where we started and where we ended, okay, in your role in all those aspects at the beginning, the recruitment and development of individuals. So, uh, you know, th that's what we're going to just be looking at Okay, in the in, in the last in the last session uh, in this this second half of the session here, <clears throat> and what I've been thinking about then is trying to um, to look at you know what we might be able to do, and let's look at this this aspect of thinking and preparing into the role. And I gave you as homework last week uh, to to get a person spec of your next of your next job, your next role, and and to. Uh, you know, if we were to do that and to look ahead and we've got these eight things before us, what is perhaps in this table here, perhaps the minimum that might be required for you to be able to, because that's it, we've got two sides of A4 to fill. We're going to have to be writing about some stuff. If we haven't done it, then it's going to be a little, letter's going to be a little thin. So one column here is the minimum required. And then maybe, see, the one thing I look at, uh, Suki and Davis said their thing is initiative. I love someone that's a little bit cheeky, that takes the initiatives, that asks, no, middle leaders don't do that. Uh, well, this one is, you know, about asking initiative in a very polite way with a smile on their face. And I've just got a few ideas here to share with you about how you might be able to not just read the Time Z, uh, you know, for uh, knowledge of education, but go the extra mile to maybe work across that whole school platform. So here you go. I'd be interested in people's comments. We've got a couple of pages here. And these are just a few suggestions. I'm sure you've got some of your own. You soon get the idea. So <clears throat> personal CPD, you, you would need a regular and varied CPD activities. We know when we talk about the application form, you go to a section on CPD, sometimes you kind of think, oh my goodness, I've been so much organizing the CPD others, I, I've forgotten myself. So, you know, that's not being selfish and you organize CPD for yourself. So regular once a year, you know, or, or two or three times a year. And they're varied. They're not just attending a Zoom call. Well, that, that, that's valuable. But we've been involved in planning it or doing a, a little bit of assessment as a result of it or involved in giving it sometimes or sharing in the network. But so that's good. But maybe the next level could be an accredited course, a master's or, or, or an MPQ. And I'm uh, going to ask you the question in a minute, which would you do? What do you think is best? Or an assignment. Now, here we go. An assignment that often we would do uh, an MPQ or a, a master's. And then the, the assignment we do is on our current job. Head, will head teachers will love that because you're ticking off something in the school development plan to paying for their master's or MPQ or whatever, even though they're free now. But what about if you do an assignment not on your current role, but the assignment on your next role? So rather than talk about line management, talk about the line management of, of middle leaders 
effective line management by senior staff. Because that's what your next role is going to be. So when you ask a question about it in the interview, you've got loads to say. So that's number one. Number two, you could subscribe to the TS or be involved in your subject association. That's good. And so, you know, if we're really to not just subscribe to it, it's because it's not, it's not just signing off the, the, uh, the standing order, but it's the, the reading of it and thinking, right, well, you've read it. How is it going to apply to my school? <clears throat> Maybe next level stuff you could ask the head, look, do you mind if for the staff newsletter, I might be able to write the last, last 10 things in the education news relevant to the school. Maybe you could attend research ed events that goes beyond just reading, but listening and engaging. Monitoring evaluation review. You need to do that as part of your subject development plan and do it really well, okay? Not just superficial QA, but really looking at a range of evidence and then coming to conclusion. But hey, what about this? If you were for your initiative, you were to volunteer to undertake the monitoring evaluation of an aspect of the whole school development plan. <clears throat> you might say, well, that's SLT to do that. And SLT might be a thing, hang on, that's my job. But what about if you've got a really good SLT line manager, what about if you could say, well, look, why, why can I monitor and evaluate an aspect that you're working on as well? OK, then everyone wins. SLT uh, line manager says, well, I'm, I'm, I'm being a good line manager now. Uh, the school uh, improves because they've got greater capacity to do that evaluation role. And, uh, and, you, and you win then because you're looking at a whole school development area there, which means it's something to ask for the interview question. And the last one on this slide here, improving teaching. Now, you know, if we're to really attend those my, my ECT mentor sessions and use the resources and the training opportunities, that's great. <clears throat> and that's more support there than ever. But what about then if we are to use those same principles and resources from the ECT program to develop teaching for other colleagues in your team that aren't in the first five years? That might be a way that you're expanding, okay, uh, the, the resources to develop teaching across the whole team and not just the mentees. Okay, colleagues, any points you'd like to raise about that? <clears throat> Some ideas. Asked about the Masters or MPQ. <laughs> um, so here are all of these points here relevant for a primary school as well as a secondary? Or any of my other colleagues, uh, what do you reckon of those ideas there? I think when looking at, uh, looking through these, the regular and varied CPD activities if you're in a small school you may not get opportunities to lead it so one of the things i know what i i did was to make you know i like making notes so anytime there's a cpd stuff i made notes about whatever it was and in fact i was looking at my notebook earlier um i dug it out you know it's one of these sorts of things and that way when it came to then writing a letter of application or anything i had something to say even though i didn't go outside of my organization to attend these we have you know five inset days in the year and there's got to be aspects of training that enthuse you within those uh so you know make a note do something about it so you can write about it later you know, if your school number two thinking about, you know, writing a pricey in the latest education staff newsletter, that's not a common thing in primary. However, you could, I suppose, speak to the head and say, hey, I got the TS. There seems to be some really interesting articles. Can I once a week send the staff links to, you know, summarize three really good articles, send them a link to the TES that they can then further read for themselves? That will give you another small little paragraph to write in the application form, the application letter. Okay, thank you. Um, for me, Paul, I think yes. I would support your, your comments that you've made here, um, as you know, and I've got a little quote, um, stop being embarrassed. Um, I think you should stop being embarrassed about asking to get involved in something, um, because as long as you follow up, you've got nothing to be embarrassed about. Consider it from the head teacher's point of view. Um, what are they going to say when you offer to do something that they're dead worried about? <coughs> they don't feel they've got the time to do. It's yes. a critical uh, mover for the school. And you say that you would like to be involved and you're happy to take charge of it. Name me a decent head that's not going to say, <laughs> yes. that's amazing. Thank Absolutely. you so much. I mean, well, oh, oh, to have a, oh, to have a, 
a staff with uh, well, I think when you do get half a dozen, ten of those, I think you, you, I think you, you know you, you're arriving, aren't you? Yeah, you've cracked it. And my last head teacher, I said I want progress eight as my performance management. He said you're an idiot. And I said, well, <laughs> I, I, I need I, I need to to, to um, sort of um, bleed at the time it was Highfield as much as you are. Um, and I and I want that. And I was in charge of standards. Um, and I, 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 I was passionate about it. I worked with a, another colleague, um, Lorraine Hughes, and, um, and together we, we really drove the school forward, but we weren't afraid to put our name up um, and sound to be counted alongside the head teacher. Um, right. And that's, Erin, going back to your point, how can you make um, a move from assistant to deputy, to deputy to head teacher? As you stand up to be counted and you say, no, you're there for them and you're willing to put the hours in, and you will do that tough one that other people aren't so interested in that really counts. So yes. stop being embarrassed, put yourself forward because, I mean, and the other thing is that we're, um, you know, I know a lot of um, trust colleagues are going to see this, but a lot of other colleagues um, are going to be at great schools and, and they're going to be moving from a great school. Yes. And, and you, uh, and quite often people say, but I can't say that, can I? Because you've done that, David. And I said, no, 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 we've done that. And yes. you're a massive part of that. And go to that interview and you've got to do that, that really difficult um, sort of combination of I and we. Yes. And I think you say that um, we have raised um, uh, our curriculum understanding. Um, or we've raised behavior, whatever it might be, or our CPD program, we have done that and I have done this. And I've been a major player in the driving up of standards in maths or English or whatever it happens to be. But let's not be embarrassed about things. Yeah. You, you've, you, people do great things and they come out of their interview and they haven't talked about it. It's, it's crazy. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So, but of course, demonstrate your humbleness as well. But equally, don't be afraid to offer your services and don't be afraid to sell what you've done. It's, it's okay. Sure, thank you. That's great for both of you comments there. So <clears throat> last section here is about running CPD. So uh, there's a progression here. So you can lead CPD within your team. You can take a whole school session on, on inset day. That's, that's a progression. But what about the fact you can also take, take CPD sessions across the schools if you go to the next level within your own mat again, all you can do is ask, uh, do it as part of your appraisal, or train as a facilitator of the new MPQs, ECT programs. Let me tell you, there's nothing as uh, potent as a uh, practitioner uh, that is also a facilitator. You know, uh, consultants like me, uh, a few months since I trod on the, uh, trod on the playground and, uh, and fired up the whiteboard, uh, there's nothing like you know, someone don't think, uh, oh, oh, I'm only in school. I'm not a consultant that does it 24 seven. Uh, folks, you know, that is really uh, a winning combination if you're looking for new facilitators. So uh, you know, do get experience in your mat, get your mat to put you forward to do that. If you're running CPD across whole regions uh, now with, with, with Zoom. Whole school initiatives. Again, <clears throat> you could shadow your line manager and, and that's good, but uh, here, using appraisal to negotiate. Remember Charlotte, if you saw this the week one, said that she used appraisal to make some outrageous suggestions, many of which they, they, they said yes to, to negotiate leading on the whole school initiative, possibly aligned to your CPD assignment. And uh, Dave, I know you do a you know, associate assistant principal to bring people into that realm of, um, of, of the SLT ways of thinking, don't you? Yeah, we do. We, we have a, a, an extra line um, of associate assistant teachers and it's, it's a really good opportunity but in the past I've also done um, a traditional associate where someone uh, sits around the table with no portfolio um, right. and if your school doesn't offer that um, then I would recommend that you just say you'd love to do it um, and you're happy to commit the time contribute around the table and you will be utterly trustworthy and confidential uh, um, and that's another another thing to suggest uh, particularly um, Asika, you were saying you're, you're a middle leader at the moment. That might be one of the things you do. And in an interview, you can talk about being on the senior leadership team. Um, perfectly reasonable. Great, thank you. And um, last one, building leading teams. Obviously, you need to be do that within your own team, uh, taking initiatives for good recruitment. That's building. Role assignment, that's building. Setting the pace, that's leading. 
and uh, and tangible and tangible individual developments. <clears throat> now, you know, I would uh, I would say, what do you think about this? That uh, a measure of a good department or a team is the number of people that leave that team to lead other teams at a at a, at a, at a higher level. You know, the number of people that have been through. Sorry for harking back to Denby High School. Okay, uh, but uh, the number of people that left. Denby High School that have been on, you know, even in this, uh, even in this town and, and the county, <clears throat> to be head teachers, you know, that's great. You know, I had two or three people that left my science department to become heads of science and beyond. I was a bit proud of that, you know. So the way you can do that, that is tangible individual development. But maybe you see to go the extra mile, you could do it across a faculty. You could, uh, you know, and it's quite good to be a kind of head of humanities. It's a nice interim position. Uh, or another team in the school or in the mat, you can be used because of your excellence to lead a team and develop a team in another school within your within your group. OK, so just to uh, just to as we start to wind up now, what about the process? So that, that sounds quite straightforward, doesn't it, about, you know, a, a core and option, if you like, of those things to prepare in advance uh, for the role. So you've got something to write about for the application to get you the short list, uh, you know, to be able to some meaty things to say uh, in the in the interview. But what about some of the processes of doing that? So using the appraisal process to suggest imaginative personal development activities. And I'd say here that uh, yeah, I'm coming to realize that professional and career development go hand in hand. OK, if you're, you're going to go for a good job, the right job at the right place. In preparing for that is great professional development, which also develops your career. Always check back that you're achieving the minimum before you attempt the initiative. Let's not run before we can walk. So people say, yeah, well, it's not even do a great job in her department. Let's make sure that no one can say that about us. <clears throat> and of course, this is going to be a journey over a number of years. There's no shortcut. There's a danger. OK, if we uh, feel that we're kind of a hot second in charge of key stage three in maths, and then the head of mass post comes up down the road. You know, we've only been teaching four years. Do we go for that? Or do we say, no, I've got to mature a bit more before I can really make a success of that. So share your ambitions and your strategy for preparation. Say to the person, the line manager, look, I really want to be in this position. It's like that interview question. Where do you want to be in five years time? Yeah. <laughs> How many times have we answered that? And, uh, you know, be asked that. And so, you know, be open about it. And of course, if they know that, uh, that, that you're going to give them really four year, really good years as assistant head before they be a deputy, you know, five years time. That's going to be good. I'm excited by that. So uh, do that. And, that. and of course, it's all is go back to your flexibility words. Okay. Okay. It, this is much easier uh, in a school where creativity, I think you've alluded to it as well, Dave, and flexibility is valued. <laughs> if you kind of very hierarchical and say, oh, no, well, you've got to serve your times some before you can do that kind of thing then you know then you start to think right well yeah I, i'm gonna have to find some other ways of doing that when i've been told that in the past that's when i've gone sideways plan b to get those activities outside of school but within education and so look i kind of put this together <clears throat> to think right well i can't do all of those initiatives okay uh at the uh, the jazzy level okay in in one year i'm gonna i'm gonna fall apart so maybe if you get yourself an assistant head's role, okay, or you know you're aiming for that to be a your new head of history, and you want to go for assistant head in four or five years because you've just got the head of history role, I'd say something like this: <clears throat> say, look, here you go. You've got eight areas where you need to improve. You're giving yourself four years down the left hand side to be able to be able to apply for that. So I'm going to be starting my masters in the first year do an assignment in year two. I'm going to make that a whole school emphasis. Okay. And I'm going to be doing that on monitoring it, effective monitoring and reviewing. All right. So I'm tying up one, three and six, but only in year two, not in year one, because in year one, I'm going to be doing my pretender research head. I'm going to be a good, doing a good job as my mentor because later on in year three, I'm going to be mentoring across the team. My CPD is going to be a department meeting learn learn in you know in my, my mistakes inset day in year three and across the mat in year four you get the idea so i look laterally for any year but each of these is spiraling up okay to, to, to by the time of year four i'm hot stuff people are banging on my door 
to please apply for my job because I've heard that you are, you know, across the range, pastoral and academic, you're developing yourself in, in a planned way. Okay, no knee jerk, no knee jerk application because we're, we're on a schedule here for, for, uh, for SLT by Christmas 2025. All right. Colleagues, any, um, our hour is about up, but uh, any kind of reflections on that, on that process there? I've tried to offer a, 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 a you know, what, let's just review what we've done. Okay, we've looked at what is it in particular about the assistant head's role, having heard from my, my two guests here. <clears throat> we've seen that it's a breadth and it's also a depth. And what we're trying to do in order to give us something that's really good, meaty, meaty to talk about, meaty to write about, um, you know, we've put ourselves together like a development program here. And hopefully in partnership with the school. If the school won't play ball, then let's look sideways to be able to do that across, uh, you know, across the world, world of education here. I'd also suggest it's not only great preparation for getting the, you know, getting the job, I just think that you'll be so you'll be able to hit the ground running. You'll be so well prepared because there's nothing really there that's going to be that's going to be be, be throwing you. And a number of colleagues I've seen have been promoted a bit too soon, and uh, that's that's really really difficult, uh, you know, to sustain. Dave, any comments? Yeah, I think um, I know we're wrapping up, and I think it's important that we oh, got time. recognize. Um, the importance of being outstanding at what you do as well. Mm. Um, you you need to make sure your teaching is is top notch. Yep. That's got to be your number one priority. When you go for a job, you'll be talking about your reference. Um, yep. But we all know the majority of us um, will be moving within the locality, and also the educational world is so small. Yep. Um, CEOs talk to each other all the time. So it's really important to be fantastic at what you do um, and to, to, to build, build from there because we know that people will be talking about you. And if they're talking about you in a good light, um, then already I'm excited to be touring you around the building um, with all the things yes. I've heard about you. Yes. Um, and you talk about the PE teacher in me because I still think I'm uh, the 22-year-old PE teacher that you first met um, and still bewildered that I'm... Um, <laughs> Um, leading a school um, but the, the networking ability that we haven't really touched upon um, right. the networking ability is critical and that's quite a, a privilege in the PE world but I don't think there's any um, excuse for anybody now with Twitter um, and Facebook etc and Instagram to make sure that your name's out there you're contributing in a positive way not overly um, you're not sharing your breakfast and pictures of your um, uh, of your brunch on, on on the weekend. You don't need to do any of that. But what you do need to do is is, is have a presence um, and make sure people are aware of, of of you and who you are and your professional being, and put yourself out there. And people will talk very positively about you, um, and then they'll want to meet you and to hear your ideas and to hear how you are going to take their school forward um, and Lovely. to make it our school. Thank you. Any other comments, colleagues, before we uh, look at next week? It's been a really good, uh, really good discussion. Thank you to the guests. Thank you, Asika, Erin and Sufian. Any final comments do you have? No, I just want to say um, thank you to everyone. I found this very eye opening. Um, I've had a lot to think about in terms of how I can contribute um, in areas. Um, if even if I'm not, you know, necessarily asked to. Um, it's about how to find the confidence to ask myself. Yes. Um, if I can't find it in my current school, then how I can how I can still um, develop that in other areas. So yes. Um, yeah, I've taken. I, I mean, I'm I'm currently a chair of governors, and I can use that to my wow. advantage to um, to develop teaching and learning. You know, that's in a primary school, so I can. You know that um, it's it's just recognizing that it it is possible. And it doesn't always have to happen in the current setting. No, and, and of course, that's a great example of uh, networking. You know, uh, being chair governors gives you that top-down perspective across uh, the whole range of topics to seek us. So uh, well done for generating that opportunity to put yourself in a great vantage point. Really good. Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. 
Next week, we have, <coughs> going international next week, uh, uh, the topic is, should I stay or should I go? Career building is all about timing. Of course, taking into account other key aspects of personal and fam family life. So at the core of what we do is six key questions to ask yourself before reaching for the time's end. OK, about should I stay or should I go? And it's a pleasure to have Karim Mercia, principal and CEO of GEMS, Al Barsha National School. And Karim's in Dubai, uh, ex Denby, uh, head of uh, MFL, but uh, in the UAE. Uh, Karim is going to be speaking to us and talking about his career journey and um, and just to kind of give his perspective about uh, uh, about timing and career building in education. So thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for all your contributions. Uh, as ever, this is going to be uh, recorded and put on YouTube. So, uh, you know, you're always going to have a wide audience. Uh, have a great week ahead and uh, look forward to seeing you next week for more of the same. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.